<laughs> Hello, good morning, and welcome back to Spargo's Kitchen. Well, indeed. Christmas is almost upon us. We've been getting an awful lot of people asking us, can Jim show us how we would prepare a Christmas roast? So here we are. James and Hannah are just finishing. What are you doing there, James? Taking more of the Brussels sprouts off. Fighting with a Brussels sprout stalk. Indeed. And what have we got, Jim? Well, going to roast a turkey crab. I'm not too bothered about having a whole roasted turkey on the table to carve. I like to buy a turkey crown. Also don't have the problem of getting rid of a turkey carcass. And also, because the cooking time is much, much reduced, the eating qualities of the turkey are much improved. You get more meat for your, for your weight as well, oh, don't you? Because you, you do. have the carcass. Is, well, you've got a, in this one, you've got a little, little breastbone and undercarriage. What, what is it? It is That's two and a half, two and a two point two kilos, two and a quarter kilos, and it says it'll serve six to ten. But by the time we've added our accompaniments, you, I would you could feed a dozen of that, uh, and you would get rid of everything. Uh, we'll have quite a bit of left from this crown. So uh, if there's any interest, we could do for post Christmas. Phil, uh, some interesting dishes to do with your uh, turkey, chicken, leftovers. Uh, anyway, we, let's go. So what are we going to have with our turkey crown? We're going to make a uh, simple stuffing with some streaky bacon, white bread and pork sausage meat. We'll flavour that with uh, onion and thyme. Hannah's bought some pig's blankets. So That's we don't need to make those, yes. And it's also James's idea to get two boxes. They're simple to make yourself, but it's just as easy to buy them like that. It is it? Yeah. Creamed carrot and turnip, roast parsnips, braised red cabbage. We'll make cauliflower cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, the potatoes um, I like to use for roasting are King Edwards. They give you the best quality. Uh, roasty, in my opinion, because they're a floury potato. And these are some that I cooked earlier waiting for your arrival. The water I've cooked them in, just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I shall cook all the other vegetables in that water and I shall keep this to make the roast gravy with. The potatoes are sort of three quarters cooked and, and the beauty of King Edwards is we could oh, not throw them on the floor but scramble them in the colander and it roughs up all the edges. Another alternative is to take a fork and just scratch over them, but a gentle roll in the colander uh, roughs them up and this will we'll coat these with a little seasoned plain flour and it'll give us the most joyous crunchy roasties and some will break up and the little bits will be the cook's choice, the little crunchy bits. That's nice. A quick swipe of each day keeps my supermarket knife purchase sharp. I bought a supermarket set, There's that one, that one, and a smaller one. I think they were a penny short of £10 about six years ago. <laughs> I've offered to buy you like really expensive ones, uh, would just, uh, just sit in the drawer in a box? Well, I would just keep them in a box and admire them. They, they, can, I, can, they I have a bit of, can I have a bit of that, please? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm cutting up the swede. There you go. Okay. It's a generous portion, John. Don't rush it. We were talking about this the last time we did a roast. It goes back to like when I was a little kid and you'd be... Um, I don't know if it's a thing so much anywhere else, but we used to have swede mixed in with a mashed potato, especially at me and my grandmother's house. And I used to like eating this raw. It's lovely. I tell you something else I'm going to nibble on. Uh, right, this is just going into the uh, potato water. I very lightly seasoned it when I cooked the potatoes, so it won't need any more seasoning. And I'll give the diced sweet a good 10 minutes before I add the carrots. Does it take longer to cook, do you say? It takes longer to cook. Okay. Just. Uh, out of interest. It's 10, 10 to 11. 10 to 11. Oh, that's why I want to come in. Preheat the oven. 
Yeah. 200 degrees and your turkey crown or your chicken or anything you're going to roast, whether it be fish or fowl, room temperature, not straight from the fridge. So you take it out, if you're going to start cooking it at 10 o'clock, you take it out first thing in the morning, first let, first it, thing in the morning let it come to room temperature. room temperature. I took it out of the fridge at about 9. Yes, that's we were we were discussing this before we started this video it was about some people i don't know if they they enjoy it but they drag out cooking the christmas dinner all day and you would uh, how, how many hours you reckon two and a half i'd say we could be sat down and eating within two and a half hours i know i've got 50 plus years of experience in the kitchen so i'm experienced of cooking but you can do most of this prep. Uh, when I was at home cooking for Christmas dinner, I would do all the vegetables, and, barring the roast potatoes, and put them into their serving dishes the day before. And then all I've got to do is roast the potatoes and cook the bird. Everything else was prepared. So you could start two or three days ahead of Christmas and have it standing by in the refrigerator. Take the sweat and the steam out of your uh, Christmas morning uh, preparations. The carrots in with the swede. The turkey crammer removes the outer polythene. This is a decent sized uh, sort of suitable roasting tray that the bird came in. There is underneath the crown who was a specially built roasting pad. I want to sort of make a little trivet of sliced onion, sliced carrot and onion skins. This the natural caramel colours will come out of the skins. So it's vital to and keep will, the skins in because that gives you gravy its colour, doesn't it? It gives you colour to the roast gravy, which is a bit more appealing than white. And it saves having to use gravy brown. Because we've got plenty of room. Yeah, if you've got a shallow tray, there's no point in carrying it with the water in it. You uh, put it in the oven and then tip uh, the water in them. Uh, before I had sort of unpacked the bird, that's what I would have roasted the bird in. But plenty of room and depth for the juices to come out of the turkey. And before it goes in, one most important job is just lifting the skin. And what I'll do... It's just a thin membrane between the skin and yeah, the meat, it isn't it? Comes so you just separate nice it comes away nice and easily. And all I'm going to do is put some generous slices of butter underneath the skin, which will baste the breast as it as it roasts. So I'm just going to wash my hands, get slices of butter and we'll come back and do it. Alright, here's a couple of butter slices and we'll just pop those under there. Push them to the back so it goes everywhere. Just as a little added protection, some streaky bacon. You can use Over unsmoked, the, smoked. Yeah, whatever your own preference is. Um, I've got the why do you use streaky rather? Is that just because it's got more fat in it? So it it more it's flavor? got more fat. Yeah. And it's lovely to eat afterwards because it'll be nice and crispy. And then uh, some added protection. Uh, we'll just put the butter paper on. Or you could use your tin foil. Oh, foil? Oh, yeah. Got the butter paper there. So let's slide this in the oven. Preheated to 200. And we'll give it 20 minutes and then we'll turn the oven down to 160 and I reckon that'll want another 40 minutes to finish cooking. Uh, we'll give it 20 now, another 20 and then I'll take the butter paper off and just let the skin crunch up. And towards the end of the cooking period we'll pop a thermometer in. Sorry, I dropped the sleeve off. And I'll just put it in so I can open the door and look at it. And we'll take it up to just past like 70, 71 degrees. And then we'll take it out and allow the bird to rest. It'll carry on, continue cooking for many minutes after we take it out of the oven. And it's most important that you rest the bird for at least half an hour, preferably longer, before you carve it and eat it. It allows the flesh to relax and the juices 
which by the act of the oven will have drawn all the juices out, allows the juices to go back towards the center of the bird. As we've got the uh, potatoes pre-cooked, this dish is slightly warmed from the oven. I'm just going to cover the bottom oil and we'll get our roasties into the dish ready to go in when the bird is having its last half an hour of cooking. A little bit of plain flour, we don't want a great deal. Barely an ounce, I would say. And a bit of seasoning. A bit of pepper on mine. You're just using vegetable oil there. That's just vegetable oil, yes. I don't want any sort of flavours. That's it, some folks cook them in goat's fat, some folks... Oh, yes indeed, and uh, they produce lovely potatoes, but it's just an added expense for me, so... So there we go, uh, nicely scrambled potatoes, a little bit of plain flour, seasoning in the bottom of the oiled dish, and all I'm going to do is turn those over. Okay, and there's our tray of potatoes ready for the oven. So I'm just going to put those over on the side. Right, there's a very slight smearing of olive oil on that tray, just to stop the initial sticking. Oh, there you go. Oh. That's just that's all simple. It's just a chipolata, isn't it? Yeah, Covering back working. I go to the butchers, buy some chipolata sausages. You can have, you know, uh, long ones or you can have short ones. It's whatever you. Uh, I quite choose. like them this size because it's just a mouthful, and it? it's just one bite done. Yeah. So we'll put those over on the side. Again, if I were preparing this in advance, I would have that would, when it's cold, go to the fridge overnight. This would go to the fridge overnight top of them. The stuffing, which we're going to make next, John, uh, I'll make that up and we'll put it into the dish that it's going to be cooked and served in. Not quite, another. Just testing yeah. them to see the, the knife. Yeah, they need to be soft. We're going to mash them, so they need to be soft. Okay, John. Uh, bread sauce and stuffing. For people that don't know what bread sauce is, how would you describe it? <laughs> it's delicious. It, it is the making of the meal for me. Uh, give me the bread sauce and all of the accompaniments. Uh, I'm quite happy. I was talking about this with Hannah and we were saying, well, what's your favourite part about it? For me, for me, it's the meat and the gravy. You get like pigs in blankets or turkey or pork or whatever you've got and a good gravy. I'll, I'll take that over anything else. Uh, but I reared my children on bread sauce. It's uh, bread, uh, white bread, uh, stale, fresh, doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't need to be crumbs either. Uh, I've broken my Kenwood food processor bowl. So I'm just going to take the crusts off these and cut it up into small cubes. We'll get there in a minute, but I'm... The remains of the onion that made the base for the turkey crown to roast on. Just dicing up finely. And there's a pan warm. No, there isn't a pan warming because I haven't put the gas on. <laughs> so, I don't want any colour in these onions. Because then you end up with a, a white sauce with flecks in it. Flecks in it, yeah. Uh, so, I... little bit of seasoning and start with a little and we can always add more only a little bit of white pepper because I'm going to flavour that with cayenne, cayenne pepper I want to keep the water because we're going to cook the cauliflower in a moment so I'm just going to strain those in there so you're reusing the same water for everything, so it builds up flavour from every type of veg that you cook. That's it. I'll put those back in that pan, and I'll save that. 
<laughs> Saving the onion trimmings and the peel because I'm going to throw it into the bottom of the turkey roasting dish. Uh, just want to chop some onion for the stuffing. We want relatively small dice. For dicing, the root is holding that onion together. So we sliced this way, uh, following the lines of the onion. Because it's quite a deep onion, I've made two uh, lateral cuts and with no pressure at all, we can get a lovely a sharp fine. knife's needed though as well, isn't it? Well, uh, it's best in a little knife sharpener like that chantry. It's sharp knives are no danger. It's blunt knives yeah. that cause accidents. Right, the butter is. I learned that working in a butcher's. There's nothing more dangerous than a blunt knife because you have to put more pressure behind it, and that's when yeah. you slip. It doesn't actually come to go. Let me get the oven. Um, whilst we're there, I'll just take the opportunity of giving it a turn. Half a dozen rashers of the streaky bacon, which are now going to go in with the thyme. We have a confession to make. <laughs> this is our second <laughs> yeah. Christmas we, roast this week. We never, we never ever do it like a practice run but for this we have been able to do one because we filmed this video last week and then um, found out at the end of it that the recording hadn't worked properly so yeah we've, we've had two christmas roasts in a week but me i've had four already because it took <laughs> quite a bit of eating so anyway hey go we've used up most of our repertoire of silly sayings and jokes and mm. anyway this is the pork sausage meat you can put this in now or you could add it later with the bread as we found out, as last, we time. Found out last time because I but as the stuffing is going to be cooked again really didn't make any difference I'm going to season this now and a bit of fresh air is nice but it Blows the gas. Yeah. Bit of dried thyme. So I'll tip it into my hand. I like using thyme. It goes into practically everything I do. Should we have garlic in the stuffing or not? John? Yeah, go for it. Let's push the boat out. This again. This is entirely optional. You can add garlics. Would you put so anything you, in it like cranberries? You to add a bit of sweetness yeah, to it. You can do if you wish, but I like the cranberry sauce on the side. Not everybody in the house likes chestnut. They're not going in this. If I were catering this lunch, I would be putting them, putting them in. As you say, fresh cranberries, chestnuts, all great additions to that. But this is just some roughly chopped garlic. Not so that it's garlicky, but it just adds another layer, another dimension to the dish. So there's the... Turkey's at its first 20 minutes. It has indeed, so we'll cancel that. Turn it down to 160. In fact, I'm going to give it 30 minutes. 29. Well, it had Otherwise 21. It, it had 21 the last time, didn't it? Yeah, it, as it's a sizable crown. And I'll give it another another turn. We can make uh, when that's had half an hour. We'll put the thermometer into the bird, and we can gauge then when we need to uh, finish the vegetables and uh, everything else. Right, let's. Take the heat off that, let it simmer away in the heat of the pan, and then we'll add our bread. Back to the bread sauce. Those onions are nicely softened and no colour. So, whole milk. How much you got in there? I've got a pint. Yeah. I like a lot of bread sauce. 
uh, I mean, uh, this stuff should have medicinal properties. You could eat it or uh, smear it on yourself. <laughs> Um, Just leave that until the kids have left. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Cheese sauce. So, I need to open another bottle, John. I'll make a little too much, because whilst I'm making white sauce, I can always freeze it. What I want to add to that is bay leaf. I've got some. We've had such awful weather recently. I bought some dried bay leaf and half an onion and I shall put this on a low light just to warm the milk. I don't want it boiling or unnecessarily hot. I just want it. So you're not going to be you're not wanting the onion in there for anything other than flavour are you? It's so just you fish that back out. Flavour yeah just uh, if you had a you can buy in the supermarket those little bookie garni sachets, which is uh, thyme, bay leaf. Uh, if I had a celery stalk, I would put it in there, or a bookie garni, I would put it in there. But that's quite enough, an onion and a bay leaf. Gives it a lovely under flavour. Another favourite of mine with roast is red cabbage. I just love the way they look. They're, they're, they're wonderful, vibrant. Beautiful, things. aren't they? So, we'll I was just looking to see if there was a major piece of stalk running through there. If there was, I'd have to have quartered it and just trimmed the stalk out. I think, I think you maybe just, you just missed I it, did, did you? It's did that on purpose. It's a skill. Mm. Uh, I've I got like a, just the colours in it and the, the shapes. I, I oh, it's lovely cooked. Lovely. It's lovely raw. Again, this is something where you can really go to town on with I noticed you did this food. last is that so that you didn't stain everything pink <laughs> yes mm. well we're gonna do some uh, turn the head gets under you I mean look uh, see, Ooh, it looks uh, disgusting doesn't it so uh, melted butter cook slightly more than you think you need why does it wilt down in the juice? It'll, it will wilt down, but it's so easy to store and either reheat or eat it cold. Uh, I'm just doing red cabbage in butter. I'll season it. We'll add some a spoonful of demerara sugar and a splash of vinegar. We could grate apple into it, cloves, cinnamon, sultanas. Uh, have an experiment. With so this it. is going to be more of like a sweet or something like that. It's another lovely company. Whereas your stuffing would be a savoury one, this would be but a sweet one. The sugar doesn't actually sort of sweeten it up. There we go. For people who haven't watched our videos before, the box that Jim's got here are the little scraps that are going to go to the compost heap in the allotment. So, uh, squirt of vinegar. That wasn't. Does it have to be malt vinegar or could no, you use white, white vinegar? Malt vinegar uh, white wine vinegar, cider vinegar. Uh, I'm putting demerara sugar in, so that's what's in the tub, so that's what's going in. I'm going to start it in a saucepan. I like your exact measurements. Uh, I do too. I've noticed that people are much more tuned into children now and they their difficulties or coping mechanisms are analysed, appreciated, understood. I came to realise that I was... I can't read, comprehend lengthy written instructions. Uh, something, my mind doesn't retain them. I don't have the powers to concentrate. I don't know what it is. So, I, my cooking is pretty much self-taught. I've worked with some lovely people who inspire you to do great things. Uh, but recipe reading isn't something I've ever aspired to do. <laughs> uh, not everything goes right the first time. But that's how we learn, by making mistakes. Right, I 
just got half of this loaf out and just taking the worst of the crusts off. And I'm going to cut these down. This is instead of your, well, you would have made breadcrumbs in your breadcrumb made, maker, wouldn't you? Yeah, but I just need to, to get these in so it starts to soak up into the milk. Yeah. So what we have there is our milk and butter, the diced onion that's softened, there was a little bit of salt, and, well, the tiniest bit of salt and the tiniest bit of pepper. Again, this comes down to personal preference. Bread sauce does benefit from a little cayenne pepper. And when I say a little, I mean a little. If you like it really spicy, then add more. But we're going to start with a little. And you, I, can't, you can't take it away once you put it in, can you? I know that we're going to be putting a little more cayenne pepper in there. Probably a little more salt and probably a little more white pepper. That can sit there quite happily in its own heat and I may or may not have some more white bread but I'm going to cut more white bread up <coughs> to blend in with our stuffing. The red cabbage has had several minutes on the stove so I'm going to put it into the oven now. And the guys have been out doing a bit, what were you shopping Where for? We go? Oh my word! That's not for Jim. <laughs> uh, have you? Where's the tree? In the car. What type Is of it? tree did you get? Uh, a needle. A Remember what it's called? A uh, Bruce spruce. A Bruce spruce. A blue spruce. A blue spruce. A little square of baking parchment on the top. A bit of foil so it doesn't dry but steams away merrily. This is going into the oven. I can lift it out then when I need to put the other items in. Let's go back to the stuffing, get that ready in its oven dish. So there's half a dozen slices of white bread which we've removed the crusts and cubed. There's nothing else for it but it'd be easiest just to put hands in. And the bread's going to soak up all the juices. Yeah, yeah it is. Well. Just massage it in. Just crumbling in some sliced mushrooms. I was looking in the fridge for some parsley, but I don't have any. Right, I'm just preparing a oh. tray. Chicken's out of oh. the This is so it doesn't stick to the inside of the tray. Yeah, uh, also it gives you those lovely scrunchy bits in the corners. Let's get that into the oven because again, it's not going to harm for coming out of the recipe. Let's push this into a thick part of the bird. Right, close up. Can you see that through the glass? Oh yeah, just about. Yeah. Let's give it uh, 15, 16 minutes. <laughs> we'll see where we're at then. Another prime reason for using the oven thermometer Firstly, not to overcook the turkey, <coughs> but also now with the price of electricity and or gas, uh, the oven is used for the minimum amount of time. Cheese sauce. This is the basis for any bechamel white sauce. Is a couple of ounces of butter. When that's melted down, we'll add a similar quantity of plain flour there is our warmed milk. Just melting that butter down, John. Gentle heat. Uh, so bread sauce has been sat. I'm just going to put a gentle flame under that. We'll give it 10 minutes to cook. We'll check it for seasoning and consistency. I feel we may have to put a little more bread in there. Oh, so if it's too watery, you just add more bread? Yes. A couple of ounces of plain flour. We'll start with that. And now we'll gently incorporate the flour into the melted butter. And what we're 
looking for is a slightly sandy texture paste. There we are. That's had a couple of minutes on a gentle heat cook out and we're there. That's the slightly sandy texture we need. That is the right colour. If I were doing a brown sauce we could let that go to a lovely sort of toffee colour. I'm going to put about a third of the milk in there. Stir that in. There's the onion just sat in there. <laughs> pan I'll dispose of that. I'm just going to let that down a bit. About a quarter of a pint of stock. I quite like the background taste of mustard and cheese sauce. I'm using Coleman's mustard powder. You can use ready-made mustard or you can omit it altogether. This is a bag of mature grated cheddar put about 200 grams in. What's this bird at? I haven't got my glasses on John, what does that say? 62, 63. 63, okay. It's going to need a... That's Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Yeah. Let's take the butter paper off. I'll just put that over the vegetables, stop them catching and we'll allow all this to crisp up. So what was that, 15? Let's give it another 15 minutes. Potatoes in now. They'll have a head start when that bird comes out in 15, 20 minutes to start its resting. Then we'll put the oven back up to 200 degrees. See? A little square of parchment. I put the top oven on, just keep it below 100 degrees because we'll be eating soon, I'll, uh, it'll stay warm, otherwise uh, let it cool, refrigerate it uh, and microwave it when you need to use it. Just remove the very rough outer leaves from the cauliflower and I quartered it, just want largish florets, I liked the succulent leaves left on as I do with the roots. This is the veg water that we had cooked the other vegetables in, the potatoes, the carrot, the turnip. It tastes delicious. It's like a vegetable soup already. That is hot water. And I'm just going to three quarters cook this and then we'll put that into a lightly buttered dish and cover it with our cheese sauce. Whilst I'm waiting for that to cook, I'm going to Peel and chop the parsnips. The parsnips I'm going to put on the tray with the sausage and bacon rolls because the fat from the sausages and the bacon will roast these beautifully. I'm just going to put my finger over the end of the oil bottle and just the teeniest bit of salt and a grind of pepper. Shall we look at our bird, John? High 60s, it'll be 67 maybe. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, we need the bird out before we can put the... You've, got, you've still got four minutes left of your timer, haven't you? Oh, yes, that's going to be another 10 or 15 minutes. Those are... It's a much better consistency. The brownies are just a little bit of crust. Some gentle whisking. Just knocked up the bread sauce with my whisk. I needed a pinch more salt, another pinch of white pepper. I'm going to put a, another little sprinkle of cayenne there. That's our cauliflower partially cooked. I've got a jug underneath this. There was, there was a little jug underneath it. And not too bothered about boiling the sprouts in that water. They can add a tang to the gravy. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. What are we going to do that's extra special about the sprouts? Well, 
were going to add a hard boiled egg. Just because they weren't stinky enough, you would put some, a hard boiled egg in there. <laughs> and some, uh, if we could do breadcrumbs, I would use breadcrumbs, but we're not. We've got a couple of slices of bread. I'm going to fry that in butter. If we had some parsley, they, that would go in too. And it makes a lovely garnish for the Brussels sprouts. And gives them much more of a bang. Right, John, you've just had a look at that thermometer for me. It's 72. Lift that out. Turn that up to 200. They will now go in. Yes, sir. We are going. <laughs> bacon thieves. Oh, bacon. Good, James. James. Here are sprouts. Some people like to cross the bottoms. I do not. I think it lets water into the middle of them. It gets them soggy. But hey ho. Who knows? Somebody better than me. So, lid on. People sometimes ask, how, what do you cook in cold water and what do you cook in boiling water? So, a rough rule of thumb is anything that grows below, below ground, cook cold water, potatoes, parsnips, anything that grows above the ground, broccoli, cabbage, sprouts, into boiling seasoned water. Somebody will say, well, what about Swede? Some smart aleck. Like me. <laughs> Boiling water, one egg. Ten minutes. Tip that. There we go. Put a bit of paper over that. That was hot. <laughs> That's that. We're going to have a good rest. It's like it's run a marathon. And relax. You to wrap it in tinfoil, don't you, so you can have a rest afterwards. <laughs> All right, you can do it. So, dish for the collie cheese. Just going to butter it. A little bit of sauce in the bottom. Cooked cauliflower. Any, any extra you could just freeze it couldn't you? Well, could do but I've got just the right amount. But actually this makes a tremendous soup. A cauliflower cheese soup. If I were in a roasting tin then I would make it in the tin. Let's put all the gubbins in from the bottom. All that's left is little deposit bits. No use to us for the gravy. So you only put a little bit of water in with it, didn't you? Yeah. So all, most of that's going to be the turkey juices, the juices and everything. So let's put that on the stove, and we'll add. There's our saved vegetable water. So you've done your carrots, your swedes, your potatoes, cauliflower. potatoes, cauliflower. Take that off the heat. Don't put your hand in that saucepan to wash it. It's boiling. Cold water. Stops the egg cooking. This would be better with breadcrumbs, but as I can't make breadcrumbs, I'm just going to chop it up nice and small. There's a ounce or so of butter on a moderate heat. Look, that's all the bits from the <coughs> turkey roasting. I'm just going to Put some plain flour in there, about an ounce. Thicken up the gravy and we'll let that cook out on the top before we add any of the other liquids to it. Uh, as I say, I would normally do this in the roasting tin as we use that little foil tray. It's something less to wash up. I'm not concerned. Should there be any lumps in this because we will strain it out. Just lift these out John, give them a little flick with the gently give them out. Oh look at that. That's I was just tying up that piece there. <laughs> Cook's privilege that one. Everything else is doing okay.
that's up to 200 now. In there we've got stuffing, red cabbage, carrot and turnip. In a moment we'll reduce the heat of the oven. We'll turn it off, but we'll put the plates in there too. Right there. Toasting along nicely. Here's our sprouts. Just give those a little season up. Now, uh, now the egg. Here we are. The grater. There we go. Uh, just rub that gently through the grater. This does make a vast difference to the taste of the Russell sprouts. Heat off. I'll transfer that to a warmed serving dish in a minute. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we're on the downhill straight now. Everything that's to be cooking is cooking. We've just got the gravy to finish. Oh, that's. Let's put the bed water in there, John. It thickened right It's thickened up. It's, as you can see, it's got a lovely beige colour which I think is much preferable to white. Here's our combined potato and vegetable stock. There's a good pint of that. Got yeah, well you can see, you can see how starchy and... Leave that to simmer away. And we will check that for seasoning. Let's just... Bring in everything together and what is it? 10 past one? Yes, sure. let's have a look in here. And piggies look good. They, they need to come off and go on to the turkey. Nearly there. That's there. I'm going to take that out of the oven. That will benefit from five minutes on the table. Just So gravy, bread sauce, pigs in blankets, take your crown, parsnips, Brussels sprouts, what were these cooked, what were the red same cabbage cooked with? Butter, a splash of vinegar and some demerara sugar. Sweden carrots, stuffings, cauliflower cheese and roast potatoes. I think all that's missing are some crackers. Would you like a little bit more? I'm going around for seconds. I think turkey. turkey. More turkey. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Good choice. Are you going to eat your piggy or do you have enough piggy? How much turkey have you had now, James? Six. This one. Just finishing up now. I've just just finished my second plate. I don't think I could manage any more. James has absolutely destroyed half of that turkey, haven't you? He has a slice after slice. All of the pa all of the blankets for the turkey and the sausages, and half of the turkey has gone straight inside of there. And three roasties. Mm. I can't decide which bit of this that I enjoyed the most. The bread sauce was absolutely delicious, and yeah, yeah, just just the right amount of cayenne to give it a little bit of an aftertaste. Didn't it? I've got um, plenty left over for a leftovers video as well. I, yeah, I feel a jambalaya coming on. Chance. Get some. Smoked uh, pork garlic sausage, uh, cauliflower cheese soup in the week with uh, toasted red croutons, uh, Brussels sprouts. This. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm still. <laughs> yeah, I'm still. Eggs on top of those. I think Brussels sprouts are still one of those where it's it's <laughs> like you either love it or you you don't love it. The marmite of the. Yeah, and I am. Um, although they were. They were tasty in this one. I've had, I've had some of them sometimes, and they've sort of been like mush. They've just been, yeah, they're, they're quite nice, but I'd, I'd still, I think they would be off. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much again for Thank another you. wonderful roast. <laughs> yeah. <Thank you. laughs> yeah, take two. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. Bye. See Bye. you later. Bye.